Okay. <clears throat> so we are just about to start. Uh, welcome to Geekoscope. Uh, there are some new people here. So Geekoscope is a regular program here in MAMA for the last five years. It started uh, after the community at skill sharing, which happens on, on, on Saturday. Just felt that we need a little bit more time to hang out. And uh, Geekoscope is a program which explores the scope of Geek. And uh, we did a lot of explorations of the scope of Geek, and today we will just uh, continue with that. Uh, and uh, yeah, Dushan is, he was just here like a second ago. Right? So <laughs> Dushan is here. So I think it's a lot just, of yeah, just imagine Dushan is here. Uh, Dovritsa is here, so three of us will talk uh, today. Uh, and uh, we welcome you for the discussion. And I'll just uh, start with mine. So yeah, uh, Dushan made a, a great work in collecting the, the art, media art, from Central uh, and, and Eastern Europe. And that was the inspiration for us to just uh, start to uh, think about it and to contextualize it, not just uh, bring it here as an art collection, but also to think about it um, how that could be done. And uh, yeah, you told me before, we'll raise some questions how that can be done. And I hope that uh, that our contribution, me first, then Dovica, will uh, raise that uh, in, a, in, a, in a better way. Uh, so yeah, I will start with, uh, with some, 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 some idea uh, and an and, and, and invitation to imagine what was the idea of library sometime in the past. So I don't want to go into the historical examination who and when was studying and maintaining the libraries, uh, because for that we have Wikipedia. We can easily check it out. We can, we can go into the facts. But I would rather provoke a few thoughts of the idealistic fantasy of the library, uh, which we basically take for granted today. So that's how we, uh, that's the fantasy, how we imagine the public library. What, what, what would be that? So that, that's the idea that, that knowledge should be accessible to the public, that knowledge should be accessible to everybody, that knowledge should be accessible to everybody in society. So who are the members of the, of the everybody? That changed quite a lot to the history of different uh, geographical and, and, and other contexts. But I would say that just uh, 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 with the legacy of Yugoslavia, we don't, of socialist Yugoslavia, we don't really need to go with, uh, uh, with that scope. It's everybody means everybody. Uh, no classes, no races, no, no discrimination. So I, I would say that, that luckily that's the, that's the idea also uh, in most of the world today. <clears throat> so um, yeah, there's a fantasy and uh, <clears throat> That fantasy is easy to imagine because it's elusive, and uh, we call it utopian. Uh, and we we call it utopian because uh, you you would see because before internet, uh, scarce resources of, of archive of written and documented knowledge was was the foundation for that uh, fantasy, which is at the same also elusive. Uh, because we could imagine the world where everybody has uh, everybody has the access to everything ever written, uh, everything ever documented, uh, and we were not afraid of that because we knew that that's not possible in a way. At least uh, parts of the society uh, were kind of calmed down because that also cannot be cannot be done. <clears throat> but. <clears throat> So, so, so the scarce, scarce resources were like a building, the, the physical building of the library. So if everybody would come into the building, it's impossible. We can't really get all of the, all of the people inside of the physical uh, building. Also at the same time, we knew that there is a finite, num a finite number of copies of one book. So even if everybody would go and, and ask for the same book, uh, we knew that that's, that's just impossible to, to give it to them. And that's why we actually uh, felt that, that, that the public library is a great idea and great goal. Uh, and there was not really a big fear. So everybody would agree, for example, if some Santa Claus would come and say, and say like, uh, okay, here's the bigger building. 
So we have a public uh, a library here in this town, whatever, but uh, I, 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 I'll give to you like a bigger building. Uh, and everybody will say, great. Uh, or if, if we go and say like, okay, we will have more copies of every book in this library. And everybody will agree. Uh, and then if someone would come and say, uh, okay, let's make one more public library um, in every street. And again, everybody would agree. And if we would go like just a, a building on, on, on top of that, we want a public library in every building. We want a public library in every flat. We want a public library in every room, uh, on every desk. Uh, that's kind of the easy to, to accept because it's a fantasy. Everybody knew that, um, yeah, that, that it's, not really, uh, it's not really possible. But that ideal is like novel. Everybody would agree that's great. We should we, we should have it. Still, even if we, if we are able to, to, to do that without a scar scarce resources, uh, uh, without like a, a, a physical scar a scarcity, without like a number of uh, copies of book, we still would have some problems because public library is not just the storage. It's not just a warehouse with uh, uh, chunks of of of, of, of books. Uh, so we need we, we need some kind of meaningful meaningful classification, and also more than that we need some kind of uh, 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 way to know what is relevant and what is not. What's the relevant book? What what will what will come first? Not not necessarily what will come first into the public building or into the public library, but what we will read. So so we don't want to read because we can't. So. I don't think that any technological change would bring that. So we won't be able to read all of the books ever. So in that sense, we need to go for some kind of uh, 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 relevance. And then that relevance goes through some reputation systems. So we need to have a, at least authority, because we can't do that on, on, on our own. We can do some of the uh, 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 recommendation. We can do some kind of classification saying this is relevant and this is not. But we cannot do that for, for everything. So for the for the rest of the world, which we can't really do on, on our own, we need to trust to some authority. And that's part of the reputation system. So before the internet, uh, the reputation system uh, uh, was based on a technological means of production, which, uh, 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 which brought us the, the whole configuration of who's doing that and what organizational and production structure and that's still in use. We, we, we really trust editors. We, we, we know that editors are people who are, at least by definition, experts who would bring us that, that, that relevance, that, that not everything will be published. Not everything will come to public library in a deal case, or not everything will just uh, uh, be published for the, for, for, for the market. Uh, <clears throat> so in that sense, the reputation system, which was based on that reality is was working well. I mean, we all kind of, that's how we behave. We go and, and buy a book. Uh, we, we have the list of the, of the trusted authorities. We have the list of the uh, publishing, uh, publishing labels, publishing houses. So we go to Verso if, if that's our taste, because we, 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 we trust them. But the whole reputation system uh, 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 is not the only one which you can have. So in that sense, the reputation uh, can go by the, by the, f for the books. It can go for the people, but also it can go for the reputation system itself. So we can compare different reputation systems, and we can say this one is better and this one is worse. So what I what I'm trying to do here, and if most of you know me, you know where I'm kind of directing this, and it goes to the. Uh, 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 it goes to the to the uh, to internet because what changed is that that we basically have the configuration we have means of production with internet we change that completely radically so we can we can in that sense we can use that fantasy to see in the in the chaos of internet we can see what would be what part of internet would be a library, what would be the public library, what are the characteristics of public library of the fantasy, and then we can find it, uh, uh, we can find it on the internet. Internet is not just a public library, of course, but some parts of that, or the way how we, how we approach it, can be a public library for us. And uh, I'll try to, uh, to show that. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, you probably heard of uh, 
That's what we what, what, what we get on the yeah maybe just very very basic things about internet. So there is no scarcity here. So there is no like internet in that sense is the price of the hard disk uh, uh, in, in terms of storage. So uh, when we go to the physical building of public library, it like it it was scarce. It was like limited. On internet, not really. Uh, the, the the price of the hard disk goes so so low by time that there is no way that we can actually say that we have a limited, especially when it comes to books. There is no way that we can't really, I mean, we can store all of the books ever written uh, already. Uh, and then also, there is, no, uh, there is no scarcity in terms of distribution. So one copy, when it's on the internet, if you want to see it, it's already copied. And you, you don't see, there is no any price in that. So in that sense, there are no, there are no limits which we know from, from the risk from the physical world. And of course, uh, 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 as, as internet was, uh, uh, was developing, we had a number of projects which tried to address that, which were very uh, uh, fascinated and uh, uh, enthusiastic about the idea that we will finally get that fantasy uh, uh, done. And one of them is Project Gutenberg, for example. And they have a list uh, and, they, have, and they, um, <coughs> they, they, they host the books uh, which are in, in public domain. So there is a big problem. I won't actually touch that at all. I don't want to talk today about that. I, I want to still keep it in the fantasy world, where I don't think that, that fantasy is uh, a fantasy anymore. Because we have it here. You will see. It's like huge. And uh, it's reality. But at the same time, it's illegal. And I, I, I would like to keep it in that, just with that uh, 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 definition. It's illegal, unfortunately. This is one of the legal projects. Uh, another one is a, a way uh, is Internet Archive. So people started a non-profit organization. Dovitzer will talk more about that, uh, which wanted to actually archive all of the internet. So whatever happens on internet, they want to have it stored for the for the future. And one of the most fascinating parts of archive org is the Wayback Machine. So you can go and see snapshots of all kind of. Uh, all, all, all Ideally, all internet, but for sure it, it is not. Uh, 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 let's see, like uh, the, the snapshots of archive of org itself. So you get like a timeline, and then you can see the snapshots in different uh, years. You can use it for most of the websites. Uh, for example, most of my works from 1999, I actually lost it because I'm lazy, not really like. A, good in, 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 in keeping track of that, whatever, I found it on Airpack World. That was the only place where I could find it. Uh, and uh, here you can see how it looked like in uh, 1999. Uh, that was the Airpack World. OK, so th there is another one which is like fantastic. Uh, and, and it will probably, in 100 years from now, everybody will say, like, that was the, 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 one, the, that was the, the project of that age, Wikipedia. So again, it's it's kind of the same idea, same fantasy that uh, that uh, that we can bring people together and do uh, and then and then and collect and and write a knowledge in the form of the encyclopedia. So here is just a uh, yeah, here is the um, article on on a public library. If you want a fact, it, 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 you will hear. So, <clears throat> but then um, yeah, internet is full of books. Probably like a a number of all of the books ever written are there, but uh, we can uh, we can go and uh, can go on Amazon uh, and and see that they exist, but then we need to buy it. Uh, and uh, they also they do they have a reputation system. They say what is relevant, what is not by many by many criteria. Also, they do a recommendation. Uh, uh, Google, in that sense, just as a, as a search engine, is doing the same for everything on the internet. So it will tell you when you go by the keywords. It will tell you, okay, what's the what's the most relevant? Uh, in this case, it's it's uh, 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 personalized. It, it will say for myself. So it's not uh, already. So it has a, it has an algorithm uh, for the relevance, and 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 we use it. And we know that both of them. Uh, 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 run by corporations and that, uh, especially in Amazon case, uh, their goal is basically to sell as many books as possible. 
so they make balance to give you the useful information and at the same time to sell as many books as possible. so in that sense we can say that that their algorithm is driven at least by two motivations to please you but also to please their bank account. in google it's a little bit a little bit more com complex so here they say that it, it will please you but again they want to sell you advertisements so in that sense again it's 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 tuned it's fine-tuned by by, by their interests and uh, what, what they want to do. And then there are like a number of other uh, uh, projects. For example, Goodreads is the, like a Facebook for book lovers. And here is my um, account. And here you can have a list of the books which I edit. So in this particular case, I'm the librarian. I'm, I'm kind of uh, collecting the books. I'm saying this is relevant, this is what I like, and here you can find it. Or there is another one which is uh, library thing again there is a list but still we can't really get it it's not a public library even we don't have any of these scarcities we still in most of these i mean in all of these cases we cannot really get the book we can't lend it that's that's the big miracle of internet you can buy it you will see you can download it illegally but you can't lend it because that concept is just like too subversive. I don't know what, but that's what we can't get. So public library was the place where you go and where you share the, the book with others and then you learn it from there. Hold the thought. Uh, yes. Think about it for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there is solution actually. Yes. Okay, so I will go with a couple of solutions. <laughs> Uh, Dushan, Dushan work, you will probably also show that. So Dushan is doing a little bit better than Goodreads and a library thing. Dushan here is making a collection. I really like it. That's how I actually got in contact with Dushan. There are also several people. Yeah, sorry. There are also several people. So there is a group of people uh, uh, who, who are running this blog. So you can see this is very uh, fine selection of books with uh, metadata and tell you what was the ISBN, blah, 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 and then uh, to where to download it. So this is great. So all of these books here, you don't need to lend it, you just download it. And that's what I did. I, I downloaded most of the books here because we are like almost completely uh, yeah, with our interests. So how, how, how they do that? They do that because there are a number of projects Actually, one of them is like the biggest one, a library new or Gigapedia from, from before. A millions of books are here uh, ready for download. And it's illegal, but we can get it. Uh, and in that sense, this in this way, when you have a Gigapedia or library new, uh, for people from ex Yugoslavia, this is Bane Prevas, the best name for the from the, for the uh, reposit repository of of books ever. Uh, it's like, um, yeah, never mind. You are just uh, a yeah, sufferer. You who can't uh, <laughs> understand in, in, in my language. language. Uh, Bane Prevos is like uh, the name of the, of the um, It's like Jerk Transport, Jerk Transport Jerk company. Transport. But <laughs> they, have a, they have a repository of books in Croatian, sorry, in our maternity, uh, uh, yes, in, in, in our language. <clears throat> This is great. So there are a number of, of these kind of, uh, of these kind of uh, uh, projects on internet. Uh, so, so 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 here it, it, it starts to look a little bit more like a library because we can get the book. So internet in that sense, there is a list of books. There is there like annotation, there there the description of the book. So there are also the, the information about the relevance uh, by from from many sources. There are relevance which goes from uh, individual people, there are relevance which goes from the big market, there is a relevance which goes through the uh, algorithm. Uh, but the problem is that even we don't have these scarcities, scarcities which I mentioned before, uh, we couldn't get it. But now we can get it. And then there are like other, other projects, like Artwork, for example. <coughs> so Artwork is like a much finer solution. You can imagine a library, Artwork, as a very special library, like like a library on the on the department of some faculty, and this is uh, this is focused on uh, on the um, uh, on critical theory, and the great thing is that actually it starts to be a social place. So public library, in many cases, when it's really good, 
it actually gather people together. It gathered people together about sharing knowledge, about sharing things, about uh, uh, being uh, uh, involved in the community, in the development of the community. So in that sense, our org is the, probably the best example of, of, of the real public library, where uh, the, 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 the people who are actually getting here have some specific interest. It's not like a public library with uh, everything, everything there. So, so I, I would just try to show you how actually how it can look like in the what are the what are the what are the problems with with all of these. This is great. I mean, this is just uh, enough. Uh, uh, fuck in that sense, fuck the system. We got it. We can get all of these books on internet, but it's kind of messy. Uh, it's not the first. There is not really one place. It's hard to get all of the things which are great about the library on one place. And also there is that a bitter taste that whatever you do, you are criminal. But as I said, I will just leave it for, for, for later discussion. So what I would like to see is that, uh, and then you can see it from the title of, of this presentation. So internet, this is internet as a library. It's kind of close to that. But then we need a librarian, because library without a librarian doesn't really exist. We, you need someone who will really like uh, uh, lead you through the, through the library. So I will show you how one today can be a library and librarian at the same time. And there is a, there is a great software, which is called Calibra. Here it is. And this is Calibra. And um, uh, first I will go to Monoscope. And uh, uh, let's see this one. Uh, I can download it. Oh no, I, I don't have enough time. Okay, I'll just show you how, how it looks like. I don't want to do that because it will take like 10 minutes. That's not. So, in Calibra, I add a book when I download it. For example, mm, like this one. Uh, and it just imports it. This is my this is my administration interface for the library. Me as a librarian is using this, and uh, then I can go and click here, and uh, sometimes, most of the times, it will find uh, it will find the ISBN. Uh, yes, it found it, and then I can do uh, the metadata. So that was one click. One click for download, one click for finding the ISBN inside of the book. And then I can say download metadata. And it will go to Google, Amazon, and other uh, sources on the internet. And it will bring a title when it is published. Uh, it will also pick up the description of that. I can say that. And also it, it will download the cover. if it. But I, I will just keep this one because it's bigger. And here it is. Uh, I have it. Uh, oh, sorry, I can't. I hope that this is okay. Yeah. So here it is. I have that book here, and then I can just send it to my uh, Goodreads. If you remember, this is the Goodreads. Um, to my list again with one click. So if you want to check what do I have on my shelves in my library, you can go to the Goodreads. And if you know me, you know that you can get it from me. But still, you can't really download it from uh, 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 from Goodreads. So I should provide you an interface for my library and for me as a librarian so that you can get all of this data and also that you can download that book. And I can do that easily from Calibra. I can do like a, a start content server. I will just stop it and then I will start it. and. Uh, now, if you are in a local area network, if you are in the same room with me usually, then you can get you can get to the um, you can get this from me. This is Calibra. You can get all of my books here. Uh, you can uh, you can uh, you can go and uh, go through tabs. For example. I don't know, Ruling Class Studies is my research now, and you can get all of the books which I I didn't read, but I selected. Most of them are from Monoscope, or not most, but some of them are from most. And you can get it. You, you just uh, click on Get, 
and you get it. You, you just download it. But the problem is that, that you can't really reach it from the internet, from outside of this room. And then there is another project, which is called PageKite. I just paid 10 euros, but uh, you can run it on your hacker friend's server, or you can run it from, the, uh, from Amazon, uh, paying um, some number. So you need to invest in that infrastructure. Or you need to invest in your own, or you need to invest in like a, a common infrastructure for these, these things to happen. But uh, still, with a very small investment, we can actually get that out to the internet. And this is page guide, <clears throat> uh, which allows you. I don't, I don't want to like go into the details, uh, but uh, page guides uh, allows you to get your Calibra web server, which you can access from the local area network. You can share it with the world. Anyone in the world after this will be able, will be able uh, to uh, here it is. We'll be able to actually, if you go to Marcel marcelpageguide.me, you will see that it's the same. So what this little software did is that my own server from here exposed to the rest of the internet. And while I have my laptop running, anyone from the internet can access this interface. And this interface, you can go to publishers. It's really the interface which you get probably better than many libraries today. Uh, if when you get to their computers, because now most of the time, if you wanna, if you, if you don't really like have a fetish that you need to touch every every book, you go to some computer and you try to find it. And this is the computer, and this computer is allowing you to uh, to access my library. Uh, this is fine selection of what I do. I'm your librarian. I can lead you to my library, and what I accept. Uh, I expect from you is that you have the same because you could see that it's like a one click for download, it's one click for getting the metadata, it's a one click to run the interface of the library, and what you get here, and then it's one click to get it. So this is the this is the this is the library. Uh, this is not the library. This is not the library. You can't get the book. This is not the library in a sense, because it still needs uh, it, it, it needs to bring you for this infrastructure, which I'm, which I'm kind of trying to uh, show you, uh, it doesn't really let you get all of the metadata, all of the information about the book together with the book, because it links to others. So it's a, it's a messy. And, and it's, it, it, it's understandable, because these guys are heroes because they are under threat. And also, this is not library because most of the time you get uh, you get advertisement. So when you get to the library, you don't want to advertise. You don't want to see ads. So that's what we can get in couple of uh, in, in, in couple <coughs> of clicks. Uh, here you can see how I see it. Uh, here you can see how everyone on the internet can see it, how it can get it, and also how it can go through that. Uh, and that's that's what I did for the for the introduction uh, uh, of, of of this uh, little seminar, and then we can also start to talk about the art collection because I think that the same kind of changes which you could see getting from the public library as a physical uh, building as as idea and implementation in society, the the same kind of things with internet change when it comes to art collection, when it comes to museums, when it comes to most of the most of the institutions which uh, which uh, takes care of the of the of the knowledge resources of the intellectual production. And uh, I know that not everybody knows about these few clicks, but these few clicks are here. Calibra is free software. You can also program it. Uh, and yeah, that's that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. Uh, we will we will continue at uh, 4 p.m. with Dobritsa. So we have uh, 13 minutes for questions and uh, taking a little break. So if you have questions, I'm here. But
Yes. So if I like to download the book from your library, yes. you need to be online. Yes. At the moment. At that very moment. So if you are like just and you can still know the yeah, working book. hours of my library. Okay, so yeah, when you are local, it's random, okay. Yes. But you can still see this catalog on Google. On Goodreads. Goodreads. So like your actually laptop or whatever, it's personal computer, it's actually a server kind of public server. Yes. So so I can I can imagine <coughs> I can imagine that this group of people can run with uh, one dollar per month and less per person where that library will be synced, so it will be online. Uh, uh, here, for Hakla, we have Calibra, which runs on, ser on server. So you can, it's all, all, always uh, online. Is this on search machines? Sorry? If I Google. No, 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 we didn't, we didn't, uh, we didn't go with that. It's, it's now for the serving the, our, like, uh, community-based. It's, it's, yeah, it's, at the moment it's community-based because we don't want to, like, expose it, uh, too soon, we should be ready because still it's uh, you know if, if you will do that like uh, without uh, thinking about it we can get in trouble. Yeah, how and when we get in trouble, we want to be prepared. How old is Calibra project? Uh, Calibra started yeah th I, I didn't say it. so Calibra is great if you if you will this is just the, the, the case of library but if you use uh, Kindle if you use any e-reader Calibra is basically de facto standard how to manage your collections and how to bring books on your e-readers. Calibra is also uh, able to convert from any known uh, book file format into any other. Uh, and uh, if you use e-reader, and this is again a book. So the same way how library was changing, this is the book. And actually this is the book, which is very, very big. Because here I have like 100 books, and I can have like 1,000 books. And uh, I can have probably, uh, three lifetimes book collection on this, so that I'm not able to, to read it. And uh, yeah, so Calibra is part of that ecosystem of the library, book, and all of these things. Uh, 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 and I, I, yeah, I recommend it. So you can also, like, uh, you can get this and to see what's the experience. It's still not completely getting to the uh, book user interface. You can't really flip quickly. There are like a number of things which you can't do, but it's very, very close, and it's getting closer and closer. And the most, uh, and then probably, by the trends, uh, the book will be very luxury item, probably in five years from now. So you will have books, but the book will be a luxury item, which is high culture, whatever, like a fancy hipster, whatever uh, uh, signifier, but it won't be book for text. It won't be textbooks. It won't be a book with just a knowledge. It will be some very special kind of book because all of the books will go in these devices. And these devices is, again, an uh, ecosystem which is full of politics. So everything you knew about the politics of the internet, it's, it's again here. Free software is great, but it struggles with uh, Amazon, with uh, Barnes & Noble, and all, all the others. But that's inevitable. There is no way that, uh, uh, that we will keep the book market as it is now. This is changing that completely. Like, uh, I asked about the stage guide, uh, does that mean? Is it why? I assume it's a, it's a company, so I assume you also... Page guide? Yeah. Page guide is a, is a one Python file, uh, which do a little, little tricks with SSH. Oh, okay, who, who owns the uh, domain? Page guide. Yeah. Uh, it's a free software. You can run that software on your own server, but this is a service of, from the authors of the software. So you can run the same software on your server. I have it on Amazon, but it will take just too long to, to run it. To, to show you, uh, and they are running this service with the same <coughs> software, which allows any laptop from anywhere to be exposed on the on the internet, and I'm happy to support them. So that's why I pay 10 euros, and and just use it when I when I need. So basically, you're publicly sharing the copyrighted content on their domain, so I guess you could be vulnerable to their. Yes, they can get in trouble. But they can get in trouble if the new law, <laughs> which is kind of getting uh, uh, 
uh, now in, in, in US, like uh, if that new law will be uh, in charge, then they will get more into it because now they can just say like, we will send a, a message to Marcel if anyone will really uh, see that I'm, I'm, I'm sharing the illegal content. But, uh, sure. okay. no, my question is very basic in terms of uh, illegal, yes. the whole illegal issue around it, around which of course I don't have any ideological problems, but I'm just wondering right now in terms of maintenance, I mean I'm mostly using uh, uh, ARC, which is really amazing, but of course I know that they really have issues and every now and then there is sometimes this fake version of saying, no, it doesn't exist anymore, and then if you retry, 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 it works. So how does this moment just influences, you know, the accessibility of it? Because obviously it is on a daily basis endangered by its status. Yes, so it's it's under threat, and, uh, and uh, the whole architecture, the whole central, uh, the, the, the architecture where you have the central resource, which is, which serves everybody is always very vulnerable. Not just in legal terms, but in a long in a long run, it's always the the way where the power also concentrates. So at this moment, ARC is under threat because a legal entities or like a publishing uh, houses can actually go against the against the. Verso being the arc. worst. As a, as Sorry. Ru it's rumored that Verso is being the worst. Yes, Verso is the worst. Yeah. And whoever is like a fan of Verso, <laughs> it's kind of uh, ironic that 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 particular uh, publishing house is being the, the worst on, on, on protecting the intellectual property in that sense. Or uh, yeah, I mean, or writing about writing writing, writing about small publishers would have problems with that actual problems in terms of go sales going down. So yeah, so so my proposal is not to be to become versa in that sense, but actually to try to uh, build infrastructures which are different. So if you use Calibra, if you have a community which is using Calibra, then it's much, much harder because then they, they need to go in every library on every desk or in every library in the room, in every library in the flat, street, whatever, and that's much, much harder than how it is now. But in order to, to bring the infrastructures, which are which we call today peer-to-peer, -to -peer, uh, that requires some knowledge, that requires some skills. And uh, I showed you this uh, just to let you know that it's easy today. <laughs> so it used to be harder before. Now it's just a few clicks away. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I try to advocate this particular scenario. But this particular scenario, I advocate because I think that it represents the approach, where approach is how to bring the infrastructures, which are not vulnerable in terms of legal, illegal, but also in the long run, where the, the power will be distributed because there is no like concentrating on, on one. Because whenever you let one person to run it, uh, after some time, that person will become powerful. So it's better with the knowledge and skills to just uh, keep that um, in better shape. Did you look at the merging of individual libraries? I'm sure you have. Uh, That's one question. Yes, it's question. very easy. Also, I can did show you, you what Dubrav does. You, let me just ask. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Uh, did you look into automatic upload to Torrent? Yes. Yeah. That's that's what I will do uh, at Yanma Nike in next few months. So my... Uh, uh, I, I wanna I wanna do a little like a, a plugin where you will you will be able from Calibra to send it to Posterous or to WordPress or to any like a blog like for, for Monoscope so that you just with one click you can email anything from Calibra. So it's kind of easy if you have an email gateway to bring it anywhere. So you can for Posterous for example it will be uh, out of the radars for quite some time if you will do that. And on posters without anything, you just send it. You just send an email from Calibra, and uh, you can see here. Um, is it here? Send to device. Uh, so you can email a anywhere. And if you put here 
my blog at posters.com. You will get that book outside on the posters, uh, on, on, on a blog, and people will be able to download it. No, I was just thinking if you looked at merging of the catalog, so uh, for instance, in Goodreads or so. You can of us coming together and creating it's one easy. library out of two, and a third yes. person joining us. And so you can add books from single directory, from directories. So you export it, and then you can import it into Calibra. It will merge it in that sense. And also you can run different uh, uh, different catalogs, different libraries. For example, this is what Dubravka did. So this is New Left Review. Uh, last from the beginning of New Left Review until today, less 10%. And it's all method like a bit art, like a bit author, with the title, with uh, all of the uh, uh, information about when it was published in which New Left Review. Uh, so this is a great job. You can download that as a chunk of uh, PDFs, but when someone do this, then that became part of the life. That, then it, uh, uh, Got into the library. Yes, sir. Uh, but uh, one question about this merging of libraries. Uh, if I understand it correctly, you export your PDFs or uh, uh, your files and uh, import it in another uh, Calibra, another yes. machine. But it's uh, not uh, that. Uh, it's not that if I have. Uh, uh, you always have to export files from one machine to another if you wanted uh, to merge two libraries. Yeah, I can send, this is the uh, directory structure, and this is like a one book. Mm -hmm. Every book has PDF or other file format. It has metadata in OPF, it has cover. <coughs> so if I just send you this directory, you can import it just yeah, that yeah. directory or a number of directories. But you're just uh, uh, jumping with files. It, yes. It, it, it does not uh, find other Caribas in the... Uh, no, no, that's that's planned. Yeah. So it's planned that you can actually, with Calibra, you can connect to a remote Calibra database. But it's not, that feature no. is not, yeah, that's not, not a... It's, it doesn't have a feature where you can uh, in ad hoc peer-to-peer -peer network no, 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 you must find each other and say, oh, I have these books, I have these books. No, no. But uh, you can create a catalog of the books, and then you will just get a small, fi small uh, uh, file, which is text file, uh, text-based uh, file, without PDFs and everything. And you can just bring that as, as a list of, of books. Mm -hmm. And yeah, there are many ways how you can how, how you can manage. It's great software. Still, it's not the, the end of the world. It's not peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, one click anywhere, anything. But it's going that way. It, it's going in that direction. So my, my question is going to sound like it comes from Mars. Um, That's fine. But I'm just trying to think through the really the fundamental questions, I guess, which relate a little bit to what you were saying about Verso, but I'm thinking about actual libraries, for instance. The fact that libraries all over the world bought possibly 500 issues of New Left Review means that New Left Review can continue. But if nobody is paying for any of the articles, then New Left Review can't continue. And this will be an archive that is finite because people won't be able to keep producing the material if nobody is ever paying for it. Um, and I guess I just, I can't remember what the kind of plan is about how to sustain. There is a goal. So we can have two space. goals. One is to keep the to keep the business models, which are basically from the past, which are based on the means of production before internet. Or we can say we wanna, we wanna protect and we wanna uh, keep alive authors. And that's two completely different things. Because the politics, where what we are trying to do now is to save the banks, to save the publishers, to save the uh, business entities, not to say basically why we need them in the society. So the publishers, in that sense, they do quite valuable work. But they are not here because 
the they are like uh, owners of the of the press because they are owners of the of the of the means of production of the book. They are here. What what they really bring to the society is the editors, is that work of the of of the relevance. So if we will just rethink all of that, then we can have both because it's. It's unfortunate that with all of these few links in 2011, and we knew it in 1995, that internet is bringing the knowledge to everybody without any cost. And today, we still cannot rent <coughs> any book. So I don't care about Verso, because uh, I don't think that that, that that one particular case is actually uh, uh, relevant in the whole picture. I'm sorry about that. but. I, I don't think that going for the one particular one, because I, I can also feel sorry about the employees of the of the Lemon Brothers, you know, because if we didn't like, oh, if we do the right thing, then they would lose their jobs. But I think that there are like a, there are there are there are the issues and there are the goals. I'm not asking you to address the moral question. Yeah. I'm asking you about what the plan is for like how many left to review some arms. I don't have that plan. I don't think that I should actually uh, bring that plan. I think that Verso should also work on that. They shouldn't sue ARC. They should sit and fight for that. And uh, I, I don't think that, that this is the, you know, that, that the only way how they can survive is basically to keep this unfortunate uh, configuration forever. They should just... Uh, uh, yeah, they should adapt. They should innovate. They should they should bring something. I I don't think that whoever questioned the whole configuration should actually come with the solution. I can tell you what's the solution. Solution is a socialist state. The current solution. So we will yeah we will uh, pay them to taxes. I'm fine with that. Or the current solution to the similar problem is actually what Google Books was forced to make by the publishers. And that's the book selling site on which they actually distribute profit to the original copyright holders. And now we won't get into the <laughs> into the whether that money should go to the copyright holders or to original authors. But they were actually forced by the publishing industry to sell books which are still under copyright but out of print to and to distribute money out of it. So that's maybe one of the possible models for new life review to survive. That's a transition. I don't think that that's in the long term a solution. Yes, but they have to survive yeah. until the long term solution comes. I think that Verso and all the others, they will actually lose from Amazon. But if they will fight for that, then they will not lose from Amazon. Because what is happening now, Amazon is actually signing all of the best selling uh, authors. And that will go like more and more. So Amazon, in that sense, has a great chance, and Google, to be the real uh, uh, monopoly of the future publishing. And I don't think that suing ARC is actually helping uh, uh, Verso or anyone else uh, uh, in, in, like, uh, in, in, in survival. It's like a very small term, uh, a short term uh, survival uh, tactic. Because we all here will go and download all of the free books on, on Wikipedia. That's what we do. So, yeah. And like down to earth, I think uh, that all these publishing houses will always have this printed market with uh, all the libraries, the physical libraries that will subscribe for that, university libraries and so on, and people that like to have a printed version. But it's not actually true. Uh, That's not actually true. I work in a library. We won't buy paper books if the patrons won't use them. We, we, we have the, the national libraries have the archival purpose, and they have to have every single copy of a book published in that country. But all the other libraries, I work in the academic library, we don't buy books which are not needed by our patrons. Why would we? So that model also is sustainable. The libraries aren't the, the ones who will take the cost, because we are also under the, under the pressure of cost, cutting, cutting, and every single thing you can think of, for sure. So we really do need different models. But let's have in mind that Amazon, at the beginning of this year, start moving more books in a, in a total value sense. 
on the e-reader device than printed ones. Let's think about it for a moment. They build all those warehouses for the printed books, the huge logistics chains with UPSs to ship them to the customers. We all paid everything, and now at this moment they are shipping more e-books in total value than the printed ones. So the future is already here. It's just unevenly distributed. It's distributed among users of the 